Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. You are listening to another episode of Feel Good Oops. Rewind. Rewind. Podcast formerly known as Feel Good the Podcast. Currently now renamed, rebranded, upgraded, answering the inner call podcast. It's me, your peeps, your girl, Malika Lee, on the ones and twos. Thought I'd drop this new one. Happy New Year, everybody. This is my first recording that I'm posting in the new year. Decided to take a take a, a beat to reflect, refresh. I'm still doing that, but you know, the year is already moving and grooving, so here we are. And I had to take a moment if that song, if you didn't get a clue from what I was talking about, well, of course, there's the title of this episode, but this is all about Martin Luther the King. I've heard, I don't know if I got that from a movie or where I heard it, but I love that. Martin Luther the King, um, because he was a king. And what I'll be exploring today in reverence and recognition and celebration of his life and contribution to the United States is about leadership. Well, one thing I want to say that ties into this leadership is I was watching a documentary about Dr. King. Gosh, it was quite some time ago. I think it might have been uh, the theatrical release or preview to Citizen King many, many moons ago. And if you haven't heard it, I don't know where you can watch it now, but I would recommend it. It included parts of his humanity which I really appreciated. And I remember watching that movie and having an aha and seeing the parallels between Jesus and Dr. King. Like for example, you know, of course, Dr. King was a Baptist minister. So he, I'm sure was just like, he was a voracious reader and very intelligent and read a lot of different philosophies. I'm sure he was also well-versed in the Bible and You know, just like Jesus, we would call him today an entourage. For Jesus, he had disciples. For Dr. King, you know, in in his inner circle from, I think, mostly the SCLC, and I know that um, John Lewis came from SNCC, but he had, you know, an inner circle of fellow, I'm going to call them countrymen, I don't use this term, but that's what came to me, uh, that, that they had a shared vision and desire to to see society be upgraded in a way that lived up to its values and treated you know every human being with dignity and respect and there's so many people that contributed to dr king's legacy i think it can be misleading when we just talk about dr king and don't acknowledge people like reverend uh ralph david abernathy now they do have streets in atlanta uh, if you ever go down there, a lot of a lot of people that he that he worked with during that time. Former Representative Andrew Young, Reverend Joseph Lowry, but these aren't names that we normally. And of course, you know his. Uh, gosh, I'm not even going to say that. I would say his his partner in every sense of the way, Mrs. Coretta Scott King. Now, I I only am apprehensive about mentioning her name because a certain someone who got into a little bit of legal trouble has been calling everyone his Coretta, which I'm not going to alter or take a, a detour of the true content and intent of this audio, save to say that I'm glad that, you know, uh, that her daughter, uh, Rever- I think she's Reverend Bernice King, addressed it. Was like, listen. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So that's one parallel that they both had an inner circle that was with them a lot of time, and that they had some shared values. Now, of course, it was different with with Dr. King versus Jesus because. It seems as if in the Bible with Jesus, my understanding is that they weren't all equally yoked. He was their teacher. And with Dr. King, you know, his fellow countrymen, as I called him earlier, were, I think, all within their own rights, very well-trained and and sophisticated. And 
were some damn good strategists, which, you know, they don't give enough credit to. And I love Selma for showing that because it was the march was just one demonstration. So back to leadership, though, because this is another thing that I saw that both Jesus and Dr. King had in common. And it's their type of leadership style. You know, I read uh, Dr. King's autobiography, which was post, how do you say, posthumously. So he didn't write it as an autobiography, but uh, his, his, his widow, um, Mrs. King, commissioned um, a person, I don't remember who it was, and gave him access to Dr. King's writings and in pulling together, you know, from his private journals and, and different writings, they, they put together what became Dr. King's autobiography. Because I remember seeing it one day at the library and I was like, I didn't know Dr. King had an autobiography. So that's how it came into being. But anyway, he wrote about giving the Negroes, because that's what they called them at that time, or was it was it colored? I think it was first colored and then Negro, but I think in whatever I was reading, he might have referred to it, or in the book I was reading, his book, he might have referred to Negro as giving them a sense of somebodiness. And if you're familiar with civil rights, uh, it was all about subjugation and shaming and and diminishing African American people as not being equals. And you know, even with things like water fountains and all these different things, right? So it was like a psychological gaslighting. And he talked about his work and I think the very first boycott that they did, he talked about instilling in and supporting Negroes with a certain sense of somebodyness. And that's something that I think he shared with with Jesus because both of them inspired inspired people to see and up level how they saw themselves. Jesus did it by, you know, greater that ye can do than what I have done or what I what I have I think it's what I have done. Um and similarly, you know, Dr. King with his oratory fervor and leadership inspired the masses to to stand up for themselves with dignity, uh, with nonviolence, which whew, is not easy. My goodness, like, you know, to be spat on. And I'm a peace loving person, but I, you know, everybody has a line. I don't know if I could have um, put up with that and, and been able to be peaceful. Like, you know, everybody has to draw a line somewhere. And so I wanted to explore like the level of leadership and inspiration. And it was just a wondering like, wow, what, who do we have as public figures today that, and of course, usually ministers do this, right? That inspire us to have a larger vision for what's possible for us individually and collectively versus I feel like a lot of people, I'm not even calling them leaders. I feel like a lot of people in leadership roles have more are appealing to people's anger or like meeting people at their lower vibration and energy versus speaking to them from a place that they can grow into and that they can elevate how they see themselves. And I think that that is such a powerful and endearing quality, like someone that can really expand what you think is possible for yourself. And he didn't just do that for one person who were two people or three people, but you know, whole communities across the nation were inspired. Oh, that's a good word for it. Inspired by what was possible and what they could do individually and collectively to make a change. And I, I don't remember where I came across this. So the statistic may not be 100% accurate, but it's something along the lines, like it only takes one adult that believes in a child, that invests in a child, even if that child has had like a lot of challenges and some traumas, one, one person that, you know, genuinely believes in them and inspires the child because they see something in them can support a child in making, you know, self, 
um, how do I want to say this, of making constructive choices in their life versus destructive choices. And so the wondering is like, do you have somebody in your life like that? Do you have a person that sees the best in you, that supports you, that encourages you to grow into the fullness of your potential? If not, I want to just put out there, you know, some of the work that I do for the people that I'm a good fit with is doing that kind of work together of not just doing some cleanup because there's always some cleanup, but also doing some visioning like what is it that you want to live into? What would support you at this time? I believe in you, you know, like genuinely that kind of work. If it can do that for a child, imagine what having one person that's genuinely invested and that can see the brilliance in you can do. So if that's something that speaks to you, there's a link to set up a exploratory conversation in the description. If not, that's fine. But, you know, because it's related to this message, I wanted to put it out there. Because if you don't have that person, and it doesn't have to be me, but I encourage you to foster a re relationships that have that for you. And on the flip side, are you that for somebody else? Do you encourage and genuinely invest in someone else's potential and let them know how wonderful they are because you see it? All the things like, you know, really and truly, we all have to be reminded that we're that chick, we're that dude, whatever. And not just from like that ego, you know, boosting standpoint, but sometimes, you know, the, the challenges and mistakes that we, that we make become so big and the successes can become so small when we look in our rearview mirror and it's, and it's not in direct proportion to reality. So anyway, going back to Dr. King, I just wanted to reflect that type of leadership and put out there a wondering of like our current leaders and looking at, you know, when, when we're watching television or different things, you know, is this a person that speaks to my heart and speaks to the potentiality of the human spirit and of the human soul or not? Nah? And my hope is, is that with that reflection, and if you know some people like that, like, I, you know, I know that there's ministers like that. T.D. Jakes comes to mind. I'm sure that there are others. But, you know, we could stand to have more and maybe that person is you. Oh, and the and the dude I really appreciate it. I can't think of his name right now that did the Amazon, uh, the Amazon labor unions. Like he really seemed invested in the people and bringing them together for a higher purpose and higher cause. So, you know, I'm sure that there's more people out there doing that work. But for now, that's what stands out to me the most as far as Dr. King's brilliance is helping us see the brilliance in ourselves and in each other. So I'll leave you with that for now. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Feel Good, the podcast. Doggone it, I did it again. Wow, a little rusty. Thank you again for listening to Answering the Inner Call, the one-stop shop for the urban philosophy and psychology and what else do we talk about? Spirituality, of course. And then also how those intersect with each other and looking at how it shows up in society in very interesting ways. Also art. We talk about art here too. So as you could tell, I might be a little rusty, but we're putting this baby up anyway. Many blessings until the next time. And if you don't have somebody that inspires you in your life, talk that ish to you. You might need to be your own hype person for a little bit until um, a physical person shows up that can do that same thing for you. All right, keep shining. And I hope that I do that if you haven't heard some of my other episodes that I remind you of your brilliance and what's possible. That's one of our aims here as well. So walk that walk, talk that talk, keep shining. Many blessings until the next time. Peace.